So if we're going to study algorithms, we need to understand the definition of algorithm, which we'll look at in this video. And then later in this video, we'll look at how learning algorithms can actually destroy your marriage if you're not careful. I've Googled the word algorithm here, and it's taken me to Wikipedia. Good job, Google. Thank you. In mathematics and computer science, an algorithm is a self-contained step-by-step of, op of operations to be performed. I've heard people relate algorithms to being a recipe. If you're going to cook something or bake something, you follow the recipe, and out pops whatever it is you're trying to make. However, I'm not very good in the kitchen. I don't know about you. So I apply it more to those instructions you get when you buy a new piece of furniture or a new appliance or whatever. They give you a, uh, assembly required instructions. I Ikea is great for this. You go to Ikea if you have a local Ikea. Bring home the piece of furniture and you're guaranteed to spend at least one or two hours following that list of instructions. But then out pops a piece of furniture. Unless you don't follow the instructions very well like me. And then you'll get down this pathway and, oh, I've assembled this wrong. Uh, I gotta undo all this, and then, oh, I should have just followed the instructions or the algorithm. Anyway, a self-contained step-by-step of operations to be performed. And I like that definition. Keep it simple. But then I kept reading here. I said, all right, an algorithm is an effective method that can be expressed within a finite amount of space of time in a well-defined formal language for calculating a function, starting from the initial state, the initial output, perhaps empty instructions to describe. Okay. For real? That's as exciting as they can make it? I mean, <laughs> I, it's, a, it's a correct definition. It's a good definition. But my, my wife always wonders, how do you get so excited about your tech books? They're so dry. Yeah, I know they're dry and boring. But you've got to find the awesomeness in here. Let's see if we can find the awesomeness. Um, we expressed within a finite amount of space, of time, and space and time. Critical concept. If you write an algorithm that never completes, what's the algorithm worth? It's... It's not worth anything. We want to give our algorithm input and get output. Can you imagine buying something from Ikea and coming home, following the instructions, and the instructions never ended? All right, same idea here. Finite amount of space and time. In a well-defined formal language. Uh, I don't know how many programming languages you know. I know several to some different extents, and that's just because I, I like languages. I get into them. Uh, and the languages are very powerful. Some of the... The semantics they have and the syntax they give you. I mean, if you look at my link videos and delegates and functional programming, all this, a lot of power in those languages. But when it comes down to it, computers are really dumb machines. I mean, they're super dumb. They can add, subtract, multiply, execute basic instructions. You can change the instruction pointer, say, hey, loop, 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 return. But that's about it. Right? All the fanciness on top of that comes from our languages. So in this playlist, we're actually going to use Java, which I haven't used Java in any other video playlist on my channel yet. Uh, and the reason we're going to use Java is it's a mainstream, good Silicon Valley type language. And when I say Silicon Valley, that, that doesn't necessarily mean you've got to move to Silicon Valley. It's just that's, that's it's, it's an adopted, widely used language. C Sharp is as well, but Java... Uh, is definitely dominating the market. Now, it doesn't matter what language we use for this playlist. I could do C++, Java, C Sharp. My, I, I actually think using assembly language would be awesome because assembly language shows you how dumb these computers are, how basic the instructions are. Uh, but even though we're going to use Java, we're just going to use the basic call a function, uh, iterate through some uh, rays, addition, subtraction, nothing fancy. All right, we'll, we'll do some cool things with such basic uh, memory structures and, and uh, instructions. But besides that, no, nothing epic. All right, so I like how it says, in a well-defined formal language. All right, our language will be add, subtract, access an element in RAM, uh, multiply, iterate, nothing much more beyond that. And well-defined is important too here, well-defined. One thing I love doing in class is having students come to the whiteboard. And I'll say, hey, we need to design an algorithm that does X, Y, and Z. And so I'll give them some time to work on it. And I'll say, okay, can somebody come to the whiteboard and explain their algorithm? And usually what I'll get is a student will come up. They've, they've thought it through rather well. They'll explain their algorithm. But I get a lot of pronouns. And we'll say, well, we'll kind of move this and that around. And we just kind of 
have to do this thing or that thing or blah, blah, blah. And it's very vague, right? I hate pronouns because a pronoun, if you don't know, is like he, she. Instead of saying Jamie, you'd say he. Um, he, she, it, that. Uh, and and then it's going to magically do something else that will magically do something else. And it's just kind of a lot of hand waving and, it, and it's just going to work. Well, we can't just hand wave and say it's just going to work because it's not going to work. The computer is stupid. If the computer did what I wanted it to do instead of what I told it to do, uh, everyone would think I'm an awesome programmer. <laughs> but they do, they do exactly what you tell them to do. And if you tell them to do the wrong thing, then your algorithm's not going to work. Hopefully you've all experienced that. So this well-defined formal language will be code in our case. Uh, anyway, all right, I pontificate. Starting from an initial state, an initial input, uh, instructions describe computation. When executed, proceeds through a finite number of well-defined states. Okay, this is kind of state machine-ish kind of stuff. Let me, let me, um, let me outline the points of this definition that I think are going to be critical. I'm going to need a bigger font, though. Okay. Uh, point number one. Sequence of explicit, no, that's not how you spell explicit, explicit, clear instructions in a, oh, oops, my, my, uh, screen, okay, in a well-defined <laughs> word wrap down the next line, language, okay, no pronouns, no nothing, Give me some clear instructions I can follow. If you've ever interacted with other people and you have miscommunications, uh, usually it's because the instructions weren't necessarily clear. So that's important, especially in terms of a computer, because if you can teach a computer what it is that's going on in your head, boom, you just hit that Google level awesomeness. All right, two, generally algorithms take input and produce output. Awesome. Well, we'll talk about that because the size of our input affects our algorithms. We'll see that later. Okay, three. Uh, executes in a finite amount of time. Ideally, short, whoops. Okay, ideally, shorter than longer. I guess I can only type lines so long with my screen software here. Uh-oh, I'm editing the video right here, and I realize I made a boo-boo. Okay, execute in a finite amount of time. Okay, that's space and time. Space in our case is memory, and time will be, time is time, right? I'm wasting your time by explaining my error here. But finite amount of space and time. I forgot to add space here, and I also forgot to do that in the video that follows this. I recorded two videos after but space and time I'll, I'll harp on that as we continue through the playlist okay back to the video all right that's th that's the definition we're going to roll with here sequence of explicit clear instructions in a well-defined language it takes input produces output executes in a finite amount of time ideally shorter than longer um, some other things we should mention uh, be correct <laughs> sometimes the algorithm doesn't necessarily always have to be correct. We'll talk about it later. But, but generally, yeah, we, we want our algorithm to be correct. You can write an algorithm that solves the problem for most uh, sets of input. But uh, anyway, yeah. Okay, I, th I think this video is getting long enough. I wanted to clearly define what algorithm is and what it will mean for us as we progress through this list. Uh, I guess in the next video is where I'll talk about how learning algorithms can destroy your marriage and then some, some other things regarding algorithms. As always, please give me a like and a share. And then in the comments, can you tell me what algorithms you're familiar with? Or if you're not familiar with any kind of algorithms. Or One time in a job interview, I got asked, what's the cleverest algorithm you've ever solved? So let me ask you that same question. What's the cleverest programming problem or algorithm you've ever solved? Tell me. I want to know. Talk to me in the comments.